The dimension strings have, have very many features that others don't have. Like you're playing on, you have the settings on open strings, you have um, a preset that only displays on the different GDAE strings. Uh, but it also, uh, but the system with the auto DBZ is always the same. So if you go to the vo voice setup, these are the eight strings that are loaded in, right? So if, if I have different factory setups, setting that into two or four groups, one and two and three and four. So I'd have the first player for, play the first slot. Let's just turn that up a little bit. I'm gonna go into Vienna Mirror Pro, bring that closer to my microphone and also say I want that down up. So now when I'm playing DBZ, I have to switch on velocity cross, uh, uh, switch on voice setup. If I'm playing the first note, it's playing slot one. If I'm playing the second note, it's triggering slot two. If I'm playing the third slot additionally, if I'm playing the fourth again, so it's, so it's um, distributing the different sounds to the different notes. I can also say I want the first note to trigger slot one and two, I want the second note to trigger slot three and four, the third note five, six, so I've split up the eight players into groups of two. So the, the, more, um, the more notes I add, the more players of the group add are added automatically. And how do you go quickly from say you want all, all eight in unison and then you want to score? I'd have a, I'd have a second, uh, I'd say copy matrix, create a new matrix, load the whole thing in there and say I want this is my second cell where I have the um, voice setup switched off, for example. Right. So you can always have, that's why, why, these, why these matrices are really cool, you can organize stuff and just say with and without, for example, voice, voice so setup. The matrix would be switching between the unison and whatever the VC is. Exactly, yeah, depending on how you want to use it. So that's actually a powerful setup. I don't know how many, how many people are using that, the voice, uh, the voice section. Uh, depends on how you, you have to organize it in your mind that every player is like two or three players, depending on how you set it up in your setup. But it, for live playing, it's really cool because your, um, your tone weight is adjusted correctly. Any other questions? Um, you mentioned live playing. For, for live playing, the what kind of host would you play? Would you use it as standalone for live playing? Like in I'd probably, I'd probably use Vienna Ensemble Pro as a, as a host because it's so stable. And just put in anything I want to. It just, just as Vienna Ensemble Pro standalone version and then have all your samples loaded there. That could be a good idea. Or if you have a sequencer that doesn't crash, take this. <laughs> So we're going to hear that piano? Oh yeah, right. Here we go, next thing. Okay, so this is loading in and I'm just taking that out of Mir Pro so we can listen to it um, the way it is. If you're looking for a piano or one of the, you're one of those piano collectors out there, um, give it a try. I'm sure this can be set up here. You can set the polyphony of, your, of all the, of the instrument. So just set it at really high. about the piano is that you can tune it in, in, in many ways. So you have the close, the player, and the distant position. I'm just going to pull that a little bit more up so you, we can get a little bit closer to the instrument itself. You have these three positions, and in the advanced section I can decide how much reverb I want in there. I have the MIDI sensitivity on how it reacts to my playing. <clears throat> can octave shift and so on. I have an equalizer. I can do stuff in here. I have a, a, a per note e equalizer if I want to. You can go in and change the Global the, the global dynamic range and the dynamic range of each um, of each note that you play. So this is kind of the, the weirdest key editor that I've ever seen. So you can go in here and just say, I want this to be a little bit in the volume and in the dynamic range. You can go in and change every single key in the keyboard. So if, you, if you're a tweaker, this is it. Um, if you put down the dynamic range, we've recorded up to 100 velocities for each key. This is basically a MIDI compressor. If I go in very, very uh, that close, 
you can actually hear those super nice You can actually, if you get a little bit even closer, you can hear the hammer fall back and rest. If you if you hit a key, the strings are swinging in a certain speed. Depending on when you leave the key, you get a different release sample that dampens the strings depending on how long it's been swinging, so you get the right sound there. That's not so it's a double dip. Oh, the the two sus, you mean? Every key has a. You know, if you go very slowly, there's like a little, it's yeah. a pressure, there's a double dip. So when you hit up to that point, when you hit it softly. You kind yeah. Of yeah, you kind of get that feeling here too. So you can get, you can get in very, very deep if you want to. I'm just bringing out the piano very much. Or you take the dynamic range all the way to the top. Then you just get that, that dynamic range that we actually recorded. I, I You, that's the only thing that's been calculated. If I put up the dynamic range like this, I'm just going to increase the sympathetic resonance volume. That's calculated. So if I open up the, the C key down here, let it swing. As a, you get the sympathetic resonance always uh, in the background. Does it do half damper though? It doesn't do a half damper. But that's kind of the only omission that, uh, that where we had to draw a line in a way. So this is something to check out. Uh, I'm sure it's set up here too. If you have a chance to, to compare it to any other uh, uh, pianos you have, pretty, uh, this, is a, this is a pretty uh, well-kept secret for, uh, from Vienna Symphonic Library. Anything else you'd like to hear? Why are you keeping it secret? We we're not keeping it secret, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm just having problems setting it up and then suddenly the violin is going wild and I don't know. Um, no, it's just nobody expects a piano from us. It's, uh, it's, Oh. Yeah, thank well, you. Is that about seven or eight years ago, I think, when you guys uh, introduced the Vienna instrument? There was, a, there was a trick that you could do to play a repetitive pattern, especially for the spiccato patterns of the strings, to like create that illusion of fast playing. Um, have you guys developed that? Oh, before? yeah, that's just a delay. Yeah. That's just a delay where yeah. you have two, two, uh, yeah. two slots set up and the second right. one is a little delayed. Now, is, it, is, it, is it developed in any shape? Well, I'd use the I'd use the included uh, that the one thing that I never used to show is the the included sequencer. Right. Oh yeah, that's a that's a separate that's a separate presentation. I think that's it. Like for a quick overview, you've been very patient with me two hours. Uh, if you have any specific questions, come up here. There's everybody here from Westlake Pro will have your questions too. Thank you very much.